The Secret Cave, Discovering Lascaux by Emily Arnold McCauley. teacher, Monsieur Léon Laval, collected prehistoric bones and stone tools from the countryside around where they lived in Montignac, France. Jacques was fascinated by them. He liked to imagine the first true humans who had lived when woolly mammoths, bison, and reindeer roamed the craggy hills he knew so well. One day, Monsieur Laval took the class to Font de Gaume, a prehistoric cave discovered decades before in 1901. As they inched along a narrow passage, the children saw drawings of animals. They seemed to float along the walls into the inky darkness. We are in the presence of the very beginning of art, whispered Monsieur Laval. For our first ancestors, this was a sacred place. Jacques noticed initials and a name scratched in French. Who did this? Years ago, people didn't understand what this was and added their own marks, Monsieur Laval said. They desecrated this place. By 1940, when Jacques was a few years older, World War II had begun. The German army had marched across France and captured Paris. The French government had surrendered, but Montenac, in the free zone in southern France, was not yet occupied by the Nazis. Jacques's best friends were George Agnel, nicknamed Jojo, who came from Paris to visit his grandmother in Montenac every year, and Simon Cohenkas, a Jewish boy also from Paris. They fought mock wars against refugee boys from Lorraine who were housed on a farm outside town. On September 12th, a school holiday, the three were hiding in the hills, keeping an eye out for an enemy ambush. They spotted an older boy, Marcel Ravidat, coming up the path. Marcel would be a good man for our side, said Jacques. Hey, Marcel, we're fighting the Lorraines. Want to come along? Marcel laughed. Huh, kid stuff, he said, waving a couple of homemade lamps. He came closer and lowered his voice. The other day, my dog Robot was digging around an uprooted tree. Suddenly, he was gone. Marcel's eyes glinted. And you won't believe where he went. Where? asked the boys. He had fallen into a deep hole, very deep. I had a hard time getting him out, but I think he found the entrance to the Count's tunnel. What's that? asked Jojo. There's an old story that one of the nobles here dug a tunnel from his chateau and stashed gold in it, Jacques explained. Forget the Lorraines. Let's help Marcel find the treasure. Marcel led them to the fallen tree. They pulled saplings away and hacked at the hole with Marcel's knife until it was big enough for him to squeeze through. He disappeared with a clattering of stones. 
From far below, he called, Come on! The others skidded down the shaft and landed on a pile of rubble. There wasn't room to stand. This is spooky, muttered Jojo. Marcel lit one of his lamps and handed it to Jacques. Then he lit one for himself and began crawling along in the dark. It keeps going down, he called. They smelled damp clay. Water dripped ominously. Except for the halo of Marcel's homemade lamps, all was blackness. What if it caves in, said Simon. Maybe we shouldn't go any further. You want to wait for us, Jacques asked him. No, but it's as cold as a tomb, said Jojo. And wet, said Jacques. How will we find our way back? Simon asked. It's a tunnel, said Jacques. There's only one way to go. Behind him, Simon whispered, Jacques, no one even knows we're in here. We can't stop now, Jacques said. He was scared too, but he was even more excited. They entered a larger chamber. Marcel's lamp shone on a narrow opening at the end of it. He squeezed through. A moment later, he called out. The others crept forward. They were in a huge cave. What's that? Marcel pointed to the red paint on the wall next to the cave's entrance. Jacques whispered, It's a cow! For a moment, the huge beast was terrifying, but it also seemed to watch over them. She will serve as a marker to help us find our way back, Jacques thought. What is this place? Simon whispered. After a moment, Jacques spoke, I know. I think prehistoric people made that picture. My teacher, Monsieur Laval, said caves were their holy places. As they crept through the other passages, their lights revealed more and more animals, some massive, some delicate. Then Jacques held up his lamp and they saw a reindeer on another wall. These paintings can't be old, said Marcel. They look brand new. But animals like these don't live here anymore, Jacques said. Turning back, they found the chamber they had first passed through was also covered with paintings. No one said a word. After they climbed out, Marcel took charge again. We have a lot to explore. Each of you bring a lamp tomorrow, and remember, you can't tell a soul. They all swore not to tell anyone. But the next morning, Simon showed up with his younger brother, Maurice. Marcel was furious. He'll have to come, but no more blabbering. This is our cave. They found another long tunnel leading away from the main one. There were more paintings of horses, cows, bulls, and many reindeer. At the end of a short corridor off the tunnel, they found a deep shaft. The four younger boys held a rope for Marcel, and he shinnied down it.
there's a picture of a man with a bird head. He's wounded, he called up to the boys. And a bison, also wounded. The others wanted to see the strange images too, so Marcel climbed back out and lowered each of them into the hole. When they were done, he had to haul them up 30 feet because moisture in the cave had made the rope slippery. That's it, said Marcel. The Count's treasure isn't here. The treasure is all over the walls, Jacques cried. My teacher said it's thousands of years old. We have to tell Monsieur Laval about this. No, Marcel said. We found it. We could charge admission and get rich if it's so great. If we tell people, they'll take it away from us. They explored the cave for three more days. When they climbed out on September 16th, a crowd of village children was waiting for them. Marcel said, which of you told about this? It was supposed to be our secret. Too many people know about it, Jacques said. Let's tell Monsieur Laval now. He'll know what to do. Marcel gave him a disgusted look. Then he said, all right, we'll tell your teacher. But Monsieur Laval laughed at them. You went looking for gold and found a painted cave, he said. You want to play a joke on an old man? Jacques was sick with disappointment. How could his teacher doubt them? Then Monsieur Laval relented. My former student Georges Esleguil could draw. Take him to the cave and have him make some sketches of your discovery. The student made careful copies of some of the animals in the main cave. Later, the boys waited as Laval studied them. All right, he said finally. Let's go see what you've found. Nearly every child in town followed them into the cave and waited in suspense to see what Monsieur Laval's verdict would be. In the first great hall, the teacher gasped. Glorious! These are the finest cave paintings I have ever seen. They are perfectly preserved. This treasure comes straight from our ancestors to all people everywhere. He told them that France's greatest expert on prehistoric art, the abbot Henri Bray, had fled Paris when it was occupied and was staying nearby. The boys enlarged the entrance some more and added a ladder for the abbot. When he saw the paintings, Abbot Bray said, I give humble thanks that I lived long enough to see this. Brave boys, I entrust the sacred place to you. Protect it from any who might damage it. The boys built a barrier in front of the entrance and slept there in tents every night for months. There would be no graffiti in Lascaux. Their discovery was reported in newspapers all over the world. World War II raged on, but in the first months, dozens and then hundreds of people came to see the perfectly preserved paintings and to feel their mysterious power. After Jojo and Simon went back to Paris, Marcel and Jacques were proud guides to their treasure. People called them heroes. After the war, they were put in charge of Lesco and its millions of visitors. The cave had changed their lives forever.